Hi there, this is Thomas Peter Clausen from investmentexcel.com. Today I will take you through a very critical concept within bonds, within bonds sensitivity to the interest rate. It's called convexity. Uh, traditionally uh, a measure uh, that is very, very complicated for, for students. We shall look at uh, the convexity measure as a theoretical measure and also the, the more applied approximation uh, measure to look at present value and yield to maturities which are both uh, inherent in the convexity measure. I would say that the skills required for this session is probably somewhat above uh, simple or standard uh, skills. Um, there are some rather nasty formulas. Anyway, this Excel workbook and the video uh, is available on the website investmentexcel.com and the website spotafile.com. All right, let's kick off by looking at those nasty formulas in the convexity measure. Up here, <coughs> I will just start by referring to the modified duration measure, measure as uh, an approximation tool, and we can see that the change in the PV can be approximated by the modif modified duration measure. And here comes the convexity uh, into the game because the change in the PV can be approximated by the sum of the modified duration measure and uh, the convexity measure, which is in this nasty uh, group of uh, variables. And here's the total change in the PV approximated by the first contribution of the modified uh, duration concept and the convexity concept. As we can see here, the convexity contribution is a multiplication of uh, one half and the change in the yield to maturity squared times the convexity. So it's not convexity uh, standalone, it has to be multiplied with those variables. Down here we have the convexity and how it's calculated and it looks pretty much like the duration measure uh, also with the, some sort of relative PV on the cash flows uh, summed. But here we have to divide by 1 plus R uh, squared and we also have to multiply in the denominator by T plus 1 on each cash flow. On a more general note, the modified duration is a linear approximation to the theoretically correct price change of the PV uh, when, when changing the yield to maturity up or down. And the convexity is a measure of the second derivative of that approximation. So mathematically speaking, it's, it's, it's the second factor in a Taylor approximation. A Taylor approximation that has infinitely many um, parts that summed uh, gives the correct change in the PV price. But in fixed income we normally only look at the modified duration and the convexity terms because combined they explain more or less 100% uh, uh, of the correct price change in the PV. Okay, let's just look at how it works. I will just kick off by presenting the table here with the cash flow uh, structure. Five cash flows, five time periods equal spacing. We have an expected cash flow of 1000 in each period and we have a yield to maturity of 3%. <coughs> Remember, whenever we use the concept of modified duration or convexity, we have to assume a yield to maturity because it's the yield to maturity 
that lies underneath or that causes the sensitivity. It's not a silver uh, coupon rate, it's the yield to maturity. So, starting by pricing the present value on the yield to maturity curve, discounting all cash flows with 3% gives us this PV array. So the sum of this is the price. Oh, we see, no, we don't see it. It's, it's outside the scope of the, the video. But that's, it gives us this uh, sum, which is the price of the product if you were an investor um, buying into a product. Um, promising you to deliver 1,000 a year in five years. That would cost you 4,579. Okay, so Macaulay duration, take the relative weight, multiply it by the time, like this. It gives us the sum of this, gives us the, the Macaulay duration up here. And from earlier sessions, we know that or from previous sessions, we know that modified duration is the Macaulay divided by 1 plus the U to maturity. The convexity over here, and we see how I calculate it. I take the PV weight times T plus 1 and divide it by the present value times 1 plus R squared. And I do that for every 1 and sigma. And it gives us 12.81. So that's that's the pure convexity, i.e., that's before I multiply in this term. And then let's see how the approximation works. Today we have a present value of the cash flow of the bond, the five-year bond, this level, and say. Uh, you ask, you ask. Okay, what happens to PV if you if if yield to maturity goes up by one percentage point? We can calculate that exactly by typing in four percent instead of three percent, which I have done down here, and we can see the immediate decrease in the PV. And the theoretically correct bond uh, return because of this shock is minus 2.79. And this is, this is the correct uh, change in return that we would like to approximate by using some, some uh, key figures of the bond so that we don't always have to uh, go through the cash flow calculations. The modified duration we know is this, this. So I multiplied it by one percentage point. So this is the contribution of the modified duration. The contribution of the convexity is calculated by using the the right right hand part here. Zero point seven six. It's not much, but it's it's enough to make the approximation more or less equal to the correct price. And as we'll see in the next uh, sheet, the, the small difference here is due to the residual part of this Taylor approximation. So the, the, third, uh, the third derivative, fourth derivative, and so on. But this is basically how convexity works. It's, it's another contribution to the approximation of the of the return it's it's a nonlinear component of the in the present value profile okay let's let's go through a concrete example using a 25 year bullet bond it's a it's a Danish government uh, bond Danish state-issued bond, 4.5% coupon, maturing in 2039, 
and you see the settlement here and you see the spot price which is the market price the last traded price in the market we have other features here including the yield to maturity one percent and down here we have the macaulay duration the modified duration and the risk um, and convexity and it's the convexity that we're interested in bloomberg calculates convexity in a slightly different way than we do theoretically uh, because it divides the convexity measure that we calculated in the previous sheet by 100. But anyway, and the small change, small difference, even with the even with the uh, with one divided by 100 adjustment, is due to to different uh, holidays and weekdays in the cash flow uh, structure between what I have outlined here. Uh, my sheet and what Bloomberg has and it should be noted of course that Bloomberg is as always correct okay <clears throat> in order to, to calculate or replicate this convexity measure we need to be sure that we operate in our cash flow with the same uh, yield to maturity and I have typed in the correct uh, 1% and we can see why it's correct it is because the sum of the spot price and the accrued interest, this one, which is what the investor pays, is at 1% YTM equal to uh, to the discounted uh, future cash flows. If I instead had 2%, we will see a difference. But with this button here, I can calculate backwards and guess on the right YTM, trial and error until accumulated discounted uh, values of the future uh, cash flows are equal to to what the investor pays so one percent and we see at this level we have the Macaulay duration 17.29 it's not exactly the same as here but again it's due to rounding errors and holidays modified durations and then the convexity uh, at 370.6 so let's see how it works in the same way as before the previous sheet with the approximation to just remove this nasty bastard okay so we'll take this shock to the theoretical PV price 1% up we know that the price before the shock is this because I have assumed uh, a normal amount of 100 after the shock, there is a large drop in price because all future cash flows are discounted harder. The immediate impact of the bond price or the bond value is minus 15%, uh, 0.38 lower. So this is the correct change. And uh, let's see that we didn't have access to all the, the cash flows in a past more even complicated structure then we could use um, elegantly the concept of modified duration and convexity and we will see here why because the contribution of the modified duration is minus 17 percent okay simply simply taking the modified duration times minus 0 0.01 and the convexity contribution taking the convexity measure times one and a half, one half, and squaring the chains. And the sum of those contribution is the total approximation, which is now minus 15.23. So it leaves a small difference, it's calling a residual, which corresponds to all higher order Taylor factors. And this one is left out uh, normally both in theory and in practice because it's it's so small this is even for a large shock of 1% which is quite a lot in today's market for instance so normally you would shock it say two and a half or one quarter and and it will give us it will give us another oh sorry oh sorry 
okay just leave that out because that was okay okay and up here we have the total impact PV before shock PV after shock so in in USD or in, D, in DKK which is more correct here because it's a Danish bond so just change this to Danish kronas 27 kronas and the shock return as a contribution we have here the modified is 30 kronas and the convexity which give us a positive uh, impact so all in all leaving us with a small uh, change so we note that uh, an increase in interest rates by the modified duration measure is negative for the bond price but the convexity is always positive whether it's up or it's down in interest rates then the convexity contribution is always positive at least as long as the cash flow is non-optional so as long as we don't have any option any optionality in in the structure of the bond for instance with mortgage backed bonds we have uh, optionality where uh, the borrower can prepay uh, the principal or part of the principal uh, at a lower price than, the, than, the, than, than built in in the PV and that gives a negative convexity anyway over here we will see the structure more clearly the red one is the theoretically correct PV price and today we are right here at 1% and yeah, it's a little bit hard to see but but even even here there is uh, a non-linearity but this one here is the approximation of the modified duration the linear approximation and the part going from here to here is everything that cannot be explained by modified duration including convexity but most of the difference here is explained by convexity so that's about it hope you enjoyed it and I'll just leave with the with the Bloomberg uh, table here and say thank you